Hello everyone, welcome to Excel problem solving series of a very interesting problem for today. So you can see a data set here which is present onto my screen. So into the column A, I have the order ID, into the column B, I have the status, into the column C, I have the order amount and into the column D, I have the order date and order time. And what is the question? So we need to calculate the total number of successful orders received between 8 to 10 am and 7 to 9 pm also you can see we need to get the total number of successful orders not all the orders you can see i have mentioned the abbreviations used into the status column so s means order is successful u means order is unsuccessful and r means order returned by the customer so you can see all these three abbreviations are present onto this column b now we need to filter out or figure out a way to calculate the total number of successful orders which was received between 8 to 10 am and 7 to 9 pm so let us proceed with this particular problem we are only concerned with all those orders which were successful so i would just mention here as the successful orders let's say as you can see we have given two different timestamps so we need to get the orders between 8 to 10 am and 7 to 9 pm so let us create a bracket bracket in the sense the time should be greater than a certain value so uh, into this particular column or cell i'll be mentioning the time should be greater than this particular value and also the time should be less than this particular value so i'll be mentioning the timestamps here and these timestamps would be onto the basis of these two different conditions which have been provided here that is 8 to 10 am and 7 to 9 pm so let us write the timestamp so so you can see one of the thing is into this column d the timestamp it only has the hour value and the minute value there is no second value present here so we'll be taking that also into consideration later so let's also put the time range here for convenience so into this particular row it should be the time should lie between 8 am to 10 am and into the next row the time should lie between 7 pm to 9 pm that's all okay so, so for a timestamp to lie between into this particular range which is mentioned here that is 8 am to 10 am it should be greater than 759 am so why i am taking this particular 759 am value because the timestamp can be exactly at 8 am so any order could be placed at 8 am also so i am taking into consideration the 8 am value also so here the timestamp should be greater than 759 so i am using this particular function here which is the time function so I'll be putting the R value. So the R value is 7, the minute value is 59 and the seconds value is 00. zero. So you can see I've got the timestamp which should be greater than. And similarly for a timestamp to lie between this particular range 10, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. So it should be less than what value? So it should be less than 10 hours and 1 minute. So let us write the similar thing here. So I'll be using the time function here. So the R value should be 10, the minute value should be 1, the I'll be putting the seconds value as 0. So you can see into the column D they have not taken into consideration the seconds value we need not to take into account that particular thing the seconds part similarly we'll be writing for this particular range also that is 7 pm to 9 pm so i'll be using the time function and the time should the r value should be 6 the minute value should be 59 the seconds value should be 00, zero. and similarly timestamp to lie between the 7 pm to 9 pm range it should be less than 9 oh one and the second value should be zero zero so you can see we have got this particular range here now you would think why i am getting this particular range or what is the function like finally what we need to do here also there can be multiple ways to solve this particular question many times during the initial screening round interviewers they're very much interested into knowing whether the candidate can solve such kind of questions using the excel formulas or not so here i'll be using the count if s function to solve this particular question here so we'll be providing the criteria so this is our range the criteria range and we have got our criteria here so we'll be using the this particular function here now before that let us get the timestamp from each of the date and time value here which is mentioned here so to get the timestamp is equal to time and we'll be creating a time so here we need to first of all enter the r value so i'll be getting the r value from here similarly i'll be getting the minute value from this particular cell or timestamp and similarly i'll be getting the seconds value also so i'll be providing the cell 
yes so you can see i have got the timestamp here as well i'll just drag this formula to the very last so from all these time which is mentioned here i've got the corresponding time stamp as you can see so for 17 24 hours i've got 5 24 pm so i think we have sorted out many things now let us simply count the number of orders so i would rename this particular column count orders we will be using the count if s function so count if s so what is the criteria range so this is my criteria so i'll just select this particular range here and what is the criteria so the criteria is something the time which is mentioned here it should be greater than and i'll be using the greater than symbol and i'll be concatenating it with the greater than value which i mentioned here so this is our very first criteria and also the timestamp which is mentioned here it should be less than so i'll be again selecting the criteria range and this time i'll be providing the less than symbol i'll be concatenating it with the less than value here you can see and then i'll hit enter so you can see i've got five successful orders which was placed between this particular timestamps which are mentioned here now there is some error here because we need to calculate the total number of successful orders so this particular value it accommodates all the orders which are present here so here we need to add another condition for the successful orders so i'll just select this particular range here and i'll be selecting the status as successful and you can see we have filtered out three orders similarly let us do for this particular time range also so i'll be using the count fs function again and we'll be doing the same thing we'll be selecting the criteria range so this particular criteria it should be greater than and i'll be concatenating this with the greater than value and again we'll be selecting the criteria range here so i'll just select the criteria range again and this should be less than the less than value and one more criteria which is the status should be successful of the order which is mentioned here so i'll be selecting the status range and the status should be successful i will hit the enter button and you can see we have got zero and this is because here it is mentioned 7 to 9 pm and here you can see we have got the timestamp as uh into the am value so let us change this there is nothing a big deal yes so 6 is 18 if we take into account the 24 hours scale and 9 is 21 so i'll just put this condition and you can see we have got the 5 orders which were placed between these two time stamp values so also you can cross check from this data also and this is pretty much correct which we have got here so this is how we are using the count if s function to calculate the total number of orders which was successfully placed between these two particular time stamp so we can solve this particular problem using the pivot table thing also or into multiple ways so if you have any other solution to this particular problem you can mention that into the comment box and that can help other people also so i hope this particular problem was very much informational so do like this video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't to receive such kind of useful information on a daily basis meet you in the next video thank you so much bye